till midnight watching Nickelodeon? Do pterodactyls have wings? Well, this New Year's Eve, Nick's got just the thing to ring in 1995. A whole night of the best Nick shows from 94. Some special guest appearances, plus New Year's resolutions that you set in. Did someone say New Year's revolution? It all starts at 7.30, 6.30 Central with a special New Year's Wienerville. And it doesn't stop till the slime drops in Times Square. So stay up all New Year's Eve with Nickelodeon. Hey, I'm walking here. Hey, welcome to Splat Attack, a podcast honoring the slime bill pass. I'm your boy from under Brooklyn Bridge, Alex. And yo, I'm your cab driver from Central Park, Manny. Can I get you guys? Can I show you guys around? <laughs> okay. We're, we won't be doing that. We won't be talking in that accent the whole time. But we are pretty happy that we are here celebrating the new year with all of you Slimesters out there. So to all of you, Happy New Year! <laughs> oh, that was nice, but I felt like something's missing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No worries, I'll, I'll take care of that, my friend. But first, we gotta say what we're talking about. I mean, we will be diving into what some would call the Wienerville New Year's special Lost in the Big Apple. Oh, and that's why you wanted to talk in the accent. Yes, okay. it's New York. Yeah. So who's going to be joining us today? Well, if you go take the time machine back to episode 36 we actually did invite mark and max wiener and manny back for this very specific uh you invited episode. manny too awesome yes <laughs> we invited him well by we i mean brett and i had invited manny and uh well mostly brett but that's okay because i wanted everybody here too so well, we, we'll be, definitely be seeing more of you guys in the future on our podcast because this was a total blast, and I'm sure there's yeah. much more, much more <laughs> content we can cover together. Now, this episode was boring, today. right? So, yeah. Max and I are, you know, are also going to come to your guys' house. <laughs> oh well. How, how'd they get our address? <laughs> you like it? You like it? It's come this man. <laughs> only, only if you bring your golden wieners with you. <laughs> I, I think they're here, so maybe we should go bring them in. Oh, yeah, it's really cold outside. All right. Hey, Max, Mark, come on inside. Get in where it's warm, guys. Oh, oh so cold. cold. Hey, we're walking <laughs> in. Hey, how are you guys doing? <laughs> oh. We're doing great. Great to have you back. Oh, oh gosh. gosh. So good to have you guys. Uh, it's, it's good to be back, you know? <laughs> it's uh, right on, brother. This yeah. is this is the third time we've gotten to talk with these guys. Uh, one was for our uh, Hanukkah special that we got to do uh, a few seasons ago. And then last, well, no, not last season. Well, yeah, it was last season. We got to do the Wienerville 30th anniversary episode, which we got to have a lot more people for, which was a lot of fun. And that's a, a yeah. Patreon exclusive. But this one's back out for all of you Slimesters. So I... It's a highlight. It is always a highlight of the season whenever we get to talk to uh, Mark and Max. So thank you again for joining us and being here for this. Listen, it's a slimy world out there, but we're honored <laughs> to be a bunch of slimesters over here. Yeah. All right? <laughs> well, before we get really into the episode, because it's it's Wienerville, and I know this is right up Manny's uh, alley. Do you remember seeing this episode whenever you were a kid, or was this something that you uh, revisited when you got back into finding it again? Um, actually, funny story. I didn't see it when it premiered, but because uh, it was like in '94, mm -hmm. and you know, I was a little kid then, and my parents were like, uh, "You, you kids, go to bed," you know, and the parents are gonna be partying then tonight. So, but luckily, the following year, uh, New Year's Nick, New Year's '96. It premiered, uh, it came on as well. And that was where I first saw it. And you know why I saw it? My grandma was babysitting me and she's like, watch whatever you want on TV. So I'm like, yes. Go grandma. Go grandma. <laughs> so yeah, I love this special. And to this day, it's like, it's fantastic. I know I recorded it and watched it over and over till the tape sort of ran out. And then I would then 20 years later the internet came out and i'm like oh my god youtube and it's there so that's awesome 
So I rediscovered it back in 2012 when it came on YouTube. Nice. So. And and I completely missed it uh, whenever I was a kid because it was it came in on, on New Year's Eve and I never had control of the TV on New Year's Eve. It was always my parents and it was always on uh, Dick Clark's rocking New Year's Eve thing. And I never got to watch what, what I wanted to watch. I think the first time I actually got to watch what I wanted to was... 2005 2006 something like that and that it was sense. only it was only because i wanted to watch a movie and then they stopped it when it got almost midnight and then we turned it back on but yeah i completely missed this one when i was a kid and uh, because at the time we only had one tv and one vcr and i had no idea how to program the vcr to record uh re record something that we weren't seeing because you could yeah. switch to the TV. I didn't know how to do that. And and Dad was busy, so I, I completely missed it. And now I got to go back and watch it for whatever I rediscovered Wienerville and again for this episode. And I'm really excited to talk about it. This is going to be great. Got some got some fun questions oh, for good. Mr. Good. Mock. Good. Uh, and, so and I just and I just watched it with my daughter. So I'm brushed up. on. He's ready. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, well, this uh, this came out on December 31st, uh, 1994, I believe. Was it 94 or 95? It was 94, right? I think it was 94. Because it was coming out for 90. It was 94. Mm -hmm. Manny, don't, don't, make, don't let me out-knowledge you here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if I remember correctly, I would say it was Nick New Year's 95 was premiering, and to kick it off was this very special. Mm -hmm. That sounds about right. Well, my daughter just watched, we just watched it, and at the end it said 94. Oh, but was it 94 or was it 95 at midnight? <laughs> <laughs> right? So we're yeah. both right. All right, so for the basic synopsis, uh, starting this New Year's special, Mark is taking the Wienerville gang, Pops, Louie, Captain Bob, Sacco, and, of course, Boney, on a van trip to New York. While back in the mayor's office, Dottie is thankful for some peace and quiet. However, Frank interrupts with his guitar playing with some shocking news. Nickelodeon is holding a New Year's party in New York, and all the bands have canceled. Frank suggests that they need Mark and the gang to fill in fast so they can still party. Luckily, Mark hasn't left yet, so Dottie calls on Zip to stop the van. Unfortunately, Zip is a tad bit too tiny to stop it and gets slingshotted back to Dottie's office. That gives her a plan to track them down. Meanwhile, okay. The okay, you're missing a good joke in there. Yeah. What, what was Zip's joke? Zip, did you see the van go? No, but I saw Picasso once. Not the painter. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Last portion for this is meanwhile, the gang reached New York and Mark was wanting them all to stick together, but he gets kicked out of the van since the puppets want to experience New York on their own and in their own way. Uh, so for this first little portion, uh, what was it like filming the scenes in the van? Because it seemed like what, what was the van actually moving or did you have the camera angle low so you could just see the sky with nothing moving? No, it was moving. I remember that. Wow. Gosh. Crazy. Did you have to, like, have a film crew, like, drive right beside you or, like, block off some of the road? So you oh, guys... we, were, we were on the on the road, the turnpike, and um, we had a crew next to us, but we also had people shooting in the van. Because yeah, it looked like it, it didn't look like anything was blocked off. It looked like you guys were in traffic uh think, kind of gorilla uh camera shots yeah i think so man especially the captain bob shots too it's like yeah. you're in the back seat <laughs> and fishing and i think it was shorts i believe yep <laughs> no no what was oh, that i don't know a skunk oh, oh. A skunk daddy she can't find us i make these because our plans are not very clear so get ready Oh, okay. Wow. 
that I didn't know. <laughs> now, um, because we had touched upon this a little bit whenever we did the 30th anniversary, uh, where we had said that the Wienerville was being canceled, but you know, they're, they're consolation. You can have some specials. Uh, and, and we talked a little bit about the reasoning for the Hanukkah special, but whose idea was it to do a new year's special and why set it in New York? Well, Nickelodeon, it was based in New York and the, it was the top executives. They said, you know, we want to have a new year's Eve party here. And, um, even though you're not, we're going to pre-tape it like a month or two in advance, mm -hmm. but we, we still want to have, you know, a new year's Eve party for kids. And, um, so they, and, and they did in New York because Nickelodeon is actually like on 44th street, right in times square. So now what were the, um, did they give you the locations to film at or did you pick those? Um, I guess the crew just, you know, we had people wherever we can get permission, you know, we had to get permits for every place. Gosh, I can't even imagine. That must I mean, crazy. Is it an <laughs> no, and, and that's and that's perfectly because I can't even imagine how difficult it's got to be to get permission and, and the permits and all that to film in New York because with all the different people and traffic and the I can't even imagine what the rights would be like over in New York as opposed to to, to here. We actually had a couple places uh, movies film here in Kentucky, but. <laughs> there's there's far less going on here in Kentucky than there is in New York City. There, there's got to be a whole bunch of hullabaloo to get that thing going. And that was still like classic 90s New York, too. Yeah. So it's like, imagine like everybody trying to get together in one place. I'm sure it was difficult. I can't imagine that. Did you ever have somebody kind of blocking the, the flow of traffic. I don't mean like traffic as in cars, but people walking by, uh, because there seemed to be very few people walking through New York at the time. I guess we did have people blocking, um, you know, at different points, you know, you, you can, you can block, you know, like, yeah, there were people got, go, go, you know, go over there, go over there. We're just filming over there up yours. Oh, oh. yeah. And that's yeah. when the other guy come through there, you know, that's easy. Oh, yeah. uh, Manny, you want to take the next portion? Sure. Dottie is ready to test her gadget, the ARMS6000.5, to track Mark and the gang before, before the New Year's party. A big machine with satellites blinking, operated by Zip, can send Dottie's picture anywhere to New York. Zip sends her to the store window, where a familiar face, Big Pete, calls her a big head. Dottie insulted demands a new location. Just like that, Boney walks by and accidentally bumps into somebody and drops his wallet. Zip sends her to- I mean, So the person he bumps into is a dear friend of mine, Jim Shanley, who we brought on, he's a puppeteer, and he, we brought him on after, not the Florida crew, but he was my New York crew. So he was my puppet builder and my live tour uh, stage manager. Great guy, Jim Shanley. That's a, yeah, that's Jersey Jim, right? There you go, yes. Um, I tried to find him for this, but I don't know any contact information for him. But yeah, yeah he made all, he made the new Pops and Louie for this special too and everything. So right. it was neat, he even made the machine. <laughs> So continuing, Zip sends her to a TV being stolen by two robbers. Dottie threatens them with jail time if they don't wheel her around New York City to find Mark and the gang. So for question, what was the reason you chose the celebrities that made cameos? You know, Big Pete and such. Because I well, guess they were popular at the time, right? Yeah, they were very, very popular. And we just thought it was like amazing that we could, anyone would want to be in our show you know so They're mark wiener it's wienerville come on right. we were the new kids on the block and um so we got pete and pete you know and uh, pete mm -hmm. and uh then you know who the father who the the guy the two e evil guys one of the sticky yeah. bands yeah oh yeah what are <laughs> sticky? <laughs> that's what they're like no but what do we call them 
did they, did they have a name in the the special? I don't think they actually had a name specifically. Wow. So so the one with the mustache, the fake mustache, it, mm -hmm. and he loses it. Well, Walmart Joe Pesci. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Man, you know who that was? I don't. Who's that? I don't know. Uh, um, the father on Clarissa explains it all. Really? Was, was it? That was Joe, Joe Connor. Joe Connor. Yep. Whoa. Really? What? Wow. He's good at disguising himself. Well, that's a fake mustache. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's funny. That's true. Yeah. And they, no, they were great. I, they they did a yeah, great I love job. Those guys. Yeah, that seemed like they had a lot of fun doing that. <laughs> um, the other question is, um, were there multiple takes to have, you know, for timing rights? Wow. Of the robbers having. Oh. Sorry. No, I was looking at a clip of it right now, and I see it now <laughs> with that giant fake mustache. But yeah, and he had like the Pete, little Pete hat also. But mm -hmm. oh yeah. yeah, I didn't. I had no clue, and it wasn't even listed in the uh, in the credits either that Joe O'Connor was it. It had other celebrities, but Joe wasn't anywhere in there. This is a historic moment, I'm right sure, now. Joe. It, it really is. <laughs> wow. Anyway, okay, that's that's so cool. But go ahead. Um, were there multiple takes to get the timing right of the robbers having to move the TV in? interact with Dottie at the same time but i know mark you were in the tv it was live yeah so that you know they were no we we were talking to each other wow yeah so <laughs> and then you know it had you know we had a light in there to make it to light it up oh wow it looked like a tv the, yeah to make it look like a tv wow cool. it's that. cool yeah the Dottie set was in there um yeah, so like i, I thought... said because at one point oh. the 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 they moved the box, and I could see the TV set, and and I had I thought it was an actual TV set, uh, and and the way the when they moved, it looked like the inside was also moving as they were turning, and I thought that's really really good timing if they did that because then All it right. would just be whoever's operating the camera just to turn it a little bit to make it look like it was moving, but no, the, you <laughs> you were actually no, moving it. That was I'm a great there. effect. The, Nick, the little Nick, lighting on it. Nick didn't have the budget to keep the show going, but we worked with ILM for that. <laughs> <laughs> that you don't get another season, but we'll we'll kill it with this special effect. Right. <laughs> I have to say though, since you were doing the show, um, did you get recognized by any walkers by, you know, while Dottie in the box moving around? I I don't know. Maybe I don't remember. <laughs> You know, yeah. back, back then, I got recognized not by parents, but by kids. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I'd be going th anywhere and, you know, and it's like the kids would like, just like, you know, going like that. And the parents wouldn't have a clue who I was. And it's like, I go, no, no, no. I'm, <laughs> not, I didn't do anything. I, I don't mean nothing weird by it. I'm on a TV, <laughs> I'm a TV show. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. I think we had pointed it out. Well, I should say you pointed it out during the 30th anniversary. But since uh, most of these viewers probably haven't seen that one, there was one <laughs> very stupid note, in my opinion, that Nickelodeon or one of the producers, somebody gave about you being in, in this special as opposed to characters. What was the note that they gave for this? It was pretty from pretty high up. He said, you know, um, what, you know, first of all, it was like, since when are you and Captain Bob not the same person? And you said, you never watched the show, <laughs> did you? That's cool. You really said that? Yeah, because, you know, Captain Bob in the van is separate than me. And he goes, what was that all about? And yeah, I think they said, you know, there's a little, how come you have such a big role in there? And I was like, God, because it's my special. It's also Mark Wiener, Wienerville. Right, wouldn't that? Yeah. What a concept, so, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right, right. So it, it's a good confidence builder. Yeah. You know, to that. Now, okay. <laughs> right, this, now that I get that clarity, go do your acting. Oh, my gosh. It, it, it's so ridiculous, <laughs> yeah. the, the amount of things that, that they would do. Uh, there was, um, 
a, a bit of an unrelated note, but still related. Uh, they were on an episode of Supernatural. They had an episode where it was they were inside of a film set and there was a ghost haunting the film set. But there was somebody on the the crew that would give notes. And I think it was their their producer. And all the notes that they would give were the most stupidest things possible. And the, the, they had admitted later, the writer admitted that all these notes were actual notes that they got right. from, from right. higher ups. Really? Uh, yes. Which it, it ties in with what you were just talking about, how uh, as much as they have their authority and what they need to do to keep the network going at the same time they, they they don't know everything that's going on in the making of these shows and half the time don't even know what's going on with the show yeah they just try to reinvent the wheel yeah right and fun fact the same guy worked on supernatural from wienerville so it was crazy <laughs> <laughs> imagine that right out <laughs> It gets around a lot from what I hear. Uh -huh. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> always, always terrible notes, but that's what they're <laughs> you know, If you want a guy who's going to guide you the wrong way, that's him. That's him. Yeah. All right, moving back into the uh, the special. Boney is on a subway asking for some money while another familiar face gives us a little quote-unquote explaining, in which case it is Melissa Joan Hart from Clarissa Explains It All. Uh, meanwhile, Sokka wanted to do some ice skating, but notices a little girl being made fun of because she fell while trying to make a hockey goal. Sokka dresses in hockey gear and is ready to play. Jenny and Sokka make a few goals while the opponents lose like, quite a few teeth in the process. And it's already been half the day, and unfortunately parking in New York is tough. So Pops and Louie are still looking for a place to park the van. What kind of parking do they do? Haven't you ever heard of perpendicular parking? It's the only kind of parking I know how to do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, Louie. <laughs> oh, hello, Manny. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great, Louie. <laughs> oh, here. Who, hey, who said you could join? Hello, uh, no, I'm over here. How come your mouth is not moving? Oh, because hey, I'm talking of telepathy. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Maybe if you knew how to use your mouth, you could perpendicular bark better. Why are you talking to me? I'm going to get you. Well, we should let them get back to the interview. Okay. Your cooking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> You're cleaning. You're terrible. Get off. <laughs> Oh, that is so great. That's the best. <laughs> that was, that That's was it. Like, we just cut the episode right there. That's gonna be. Yeah. We're not gonna top that. We we had the puppets out, and it's like that was that was the time. Oh, yeah, man. That's perfect. It's so good. Uh, for <laughs> for the subway uh, segment, other than Melissa Joan Hart, was everyone else in that subway? crew members who worked for Nickelodeon or were they just random passengers that yeah, you did it look like the subway was moving no I, I, I couldn't tell we actually didn't see the subway was that was that a set okay so there is a museum in New York the the New York City subway museum and you that's where most of the crews go to film interiors of subways oh. and they, it's the camera that's shaking moving mm. and there's you see lights moving, but that's somebody running back and forth <laughs> on the light. And then the, that whole thing, the train was just standing there, but wow. it looks like we're moving. Yeah, and it did. Whole crew. Wow. That's fantastic. It looked like everyone was really struggling to keep a straight face. Right, right. They really were. It was like, <laughs> one guy running back and forth with the light, probably. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm also, you know, crawling on the ground yeah oh uh, yeah that's right, right. Yeah. Pony, you know and uh and they're all like really dead well new yorkers yeah. that's like you could murder someone in new york and they people would just still be there i said i have murdered a man and i want to confess hey shut up down there just another tuesday because yeah. <laughs> it really looked like don't make eye contact don't make eye contact because right. it really... looked like they would break oh. if they did I'm just a simple carnivore lost as well, looking for a male! Nice hair, lady! I'll take anything! A rump roast! A spare rib! A spare tire! 
and I think Melissa was the only one who had somewhat of a a smirk whenever you already right. started talking to her, which that was a fun thing to see. Oh yeah, and so the writing in there, you know, was like Boney's there. Hey, my, you know, the joke about the was he hitting on her like the whole time? No, no. no? He, Boney goes, um, hey, my my uh, that that oil spot on your driveway. That's my cousin. Oh, oh, that's so funny. <laughs> and my little brother is an oil stain in somebody's driveway. So Sarah, my daughter goes, what, is, what does that mean? I go, well, the oil comes from the <clears throat> bones of the dinosaurs. Right. Or was that debunked? What? Is the oil, do they still believe oil came from? You, you guys, have, you have another question we can? Uh... Okay. <laughs> I'm actually kind of interested in like this. <laughs> I just like I just like watching I just like watching how Mark's I just like watching how Mark's brain works. It's hilarious. He's giving me a nod, so it's okay. Uh, no, it is. It is. It is. It's, it's still working. It's working, baby. Oh, okay. going. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs Google? We got this. Yeah. Uh, as for the uh, the hockey scene, oh, uh, the the kids that were playing hockey were they once the kids that you knew and asked to be a part of the show, or were they just actors that you pulled in for it? kids we pulled in for it but, but jenny yeah go ahead that's that's your relative right yeah it's my brother's n niece who we she was a hockey player you know so we brought her in and um and i always wanted to do sako on ice skating it looked cool and uh thank you and but then and but these kids it was a local hockey team wow really yeah and we filmed that at the Central Park ice skating rink. You can't you can't hire that kind of authenticity. No, it looked real. It really did. And it's that good. was the most awesome I've ever seen Sako be on on yeah, anything. Real. He, Sako was pretty freaking cool in this scene. This this was this right. the whole hockey scene is my favorite uh, segment of the episode. Just on how cool oh, he thank was. You. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Go home and play with some dogs. Where's she gonna get them from? You? Why, you little punk. Little punk? Why, the two of us can beat you faster than the time it takes your mother to dress you. Mother to dress us? Let's, Let's get them. I like how the argument started with, like, mother to dress us? Let's get them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How challenging was it to film that on the ice? Uh, very challenging. Were you in ice skates or no? No, I think I was on a sled because oh, they were pulling. They're you. pulling okay. me because you know I'm doing. Yeah, they, we had to figure that out. Tom Cruise, who you were the. <laughs> <editor. Right. laughs> we cool. You know, it was. That's you know, how cool. are we going to do that? You know, and move me along and and film that. And uh, I didn't know that. That's really cool. Yeah. That Thanks. kills me. There's no behind the scenes stuff about this. I, that would yeah. kill me. I would love to see that. Yeah. Then, you know, so he hits, Sako hits the puck out. Mm -hmm. Puck l hits the two, one of the guys mm -hmm. by the pond in Central Park. Who is the ice? Who is the roller skater who goes in the water? Scott Fellows. Bam. How do you know that? I don't. I just guessed. <laughs> and Scott so wrote it. <laughs> I figured that since Scott wrote it, that's I figured that was him. But I just yeah. guessed. Wow. And good, we, good job. And we said, <laughs> you know, we said we kind of need someone to go in and like people going. It was gross. I, I am not like, going in. Yeah. No one would go, go in. And it goes off oh, the hell with it. I'm going in. Next thing you know, Scott's got the skates on and he goes in. It's what on! the hell? Whoa! Oh, 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 oh. And then. The dog. Oh yeah, the peeing dog. Yeah. Yes. yes. You know. Um, that was Kimberly's dog. Uh, yeah, that's my my niece's uh, dog, and she's she's car she's walking the dog, and it was the the piss miss. What what you know? It's like he it, it he thinks that. That that Dottie is saying, oh yeah, 
Give Can Dottie I... a little kiss. Piss, right. Oh, not a, not piss. Not, I said a kiss. No, but I never said piss. Yeah. But, uh, you know. And um, then the, the dog squirts everyone in the face. Um, but the pee, it was just water, so you can see. That it wasn't real pee. It wasn't real pee. Oh, okay. No, the dog just drinks a lot of water, so it's clear. Yeah. Well, I mean, if if a dog can, can geyser like that, you might need to take it to the vet. Give Donny a little kiss! I said a kiss! Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Hey, kid, get out of oh, here! Come on! Board! March! So, you, you, you want a tragic story? Yeah. So, I think it was that dog that i think my brother accidentally ran over it in their driveway oh my god Ooh. oh oh after okay. can't do it before so yes <laughs> no that'd be a puppet it was a zombie dog <laughs> i've got to share this story with you uh we'll 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 cut it out for the main episode we'll have it for for filler but uh this is a, a story that my my pastor had told me that that supposedly had really happened but he and his brother had an indoor outdoor cat that was um astray initially and he said this cat was was bonkers uh, he would just dart in different directions or he'd be completely still and take off they called him butt nugget uh i don't know why they called him that but they did and they grew very attached to this cat yeah and uh one day the my they went outside and Butt Nugget had been hit by a car and was dead on the side of the road. And mm. they, they felt awful. They, they buried him and they said a few words and then they were done. They tried to move on. And uh, about a day or two later, they heard scratching on their front door. Oh, my God. He goes over to the door and opens it. And there is Butt Nugget perfectly fine. <laughs> And that's when they realized they buried somebody else's cat. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and because that's they couldn't call story. him Butt Nugget anymore, they called him Lazarus. I was <laughs> wow. And it was the same cat as it, their... Wow. I don't know. It was, it was their same cat. Their cat was fine. It was some other cat that uh, there was one of their neighbors that looked just like the because it was hit they didn't know they thought it was theirs but yeah. it wasn't. Sure. It was... i thought you were gonna say they opened the door and there were some butt nuggets there <laughs> with, with, a, with a little note and it just said i'm in a better place with a paw <laughs> uh, that's how it signed with a paw that's that's like, the paw. that brings it full circle i love that they, they knew <laughs> oh gosh it's so great all right. Man, that's, the best. that's a crazy story. That is. It's it is. Keep it in. All right. We will. Uh, Manny, take it over with the next section. Okay. Dottie makes a quick call to Frank, saying that she found Kenny G to play at the event. But Frank disagrees by screaming aloud. No. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Manny. Who's playing Kenny G? Oh. Joe Connor. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Scott again. It was Scott. How did you know that? This <laughs> is <laughs> Manny. He knows it. Amazing. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. You are. You are. You know. Hit Wienerville history. Unbelievable. Get a man. E. 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 You're the man. E. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Thanks, man. But you're awesome to the max. Oh, my yeah. man. I, I, thought Kenny, I thought Kenny G was played by a yellow balloon. Kenny G? I gave him the wrong address. On purpose. <laughs> well, at first, at first. <laughs> uh, it was. <laughs> yeah, the very beginning. Kenny G. <laughs> that, that, Scott. <laughs> Continuing on. Um, did you guys want to know where Captain Bob is? Turns out he's at Pier 17 at the Hudson River, entertaining some guests while they're in search of Musty Martha being held captive by Captain O'Connor. But it turns out that it's really Sinead O'Connor. Now here's another note from the executives. Oh no. Why, why would Captain Bob be doing his act 
You're the same person. Down at the seaport. Why is that even in the show? They, yeah, serious? they obviously never watched it. Are you serious? Like, that's that his thing. Oh, gosh. And that executive's dumb. Jeez. Now, was it the same one? Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, same guy. Gosh. Ow. And so here's a, the Captain Bob joke that made Sarah laugh. You know, he, Captain Bob goes... You know what I really like was uh, with the sword thing. <laughs> Quick, the sword! That's the way you give a sword, you know. Oh, Captain, here's your sword. <laughs> the whole thing was so good. It's so good. It's 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 a not even a mile a minute. It's it's <laughs> it's a the lap a second. Really fast. Yeah, there. if you laugh at anything, you're going to miss another joke. Obviously, you're there entertaining the kids and having a good time and filming the show, but did you do any more with the kids that weren't being filmed? Did you entertain them in addition to having to film the thing, or were they just there just no. to, for the segment? Just for the segment, and they watched it. And, and uh, But Max and I were talking about, you know, Boney and Captain Bob, who they were hanging out with. Oh yeah, that at the end, all I remember was Captain Bob just had that like pretty mermaid lady, and then he's like, "Yeah, yeah, but Boney had the three, the the had three cute girls." <laughs> That's true. How, how was that even written into the script? <laughs> just that he's at a bar or someplace. Boney's Captain Bob. I just kind of accepted it. I was like, right, oh, right. I did too. It's like, well, Captain Bob's done. Uh, he's he's done his his shtick for the day. Now he's, of course, if he's gonna be with anybody, it's gonna be a mermaid. Oh right. yeah. Right. I mean that that totally makes sense to me. And then Boney, uh, just <laughs> even though leave me alone, I still picture Boney as somebody who would just get what he wants. And if it's not what he wants, then get out of here. But. Um, Oh gosh, I just love that. I love the whole thing. I love the whole Pier Seventeen bit. That was probably my second favorite one of the of the episode. Uh, they they were really close. But what was wanna, uh, you had a question? I wanted to ask about the Pier Seventeen part though. Like, um, did you did you get a crowd by saying like, "Hey, Mark Weiner from Nickelodeon is here. Uh, everybody, come over here. They're all going to do a Captain Bob segment." Like, did you have to ask people to like, you know, come and watch the show? Well, I think we did it on a day where there were a lot of families down there and said this, you know, you just say you're Nickelodeon filming and, and we're filming yeah. some and the people go, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. yeah, I'll, I'm there. Right. Oh, OK. Everybody, everybody just talked like that, too, back then. Of course. <laughs> Everyone sounded like Scooby Doo. Yeah, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> like long scoop. Yeah. Oh yeah, Wienerville, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're gonna watch Wienerville. Yeah, come on, guys, let's go. They <laughs> need the Bob. Bob. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Just doggy paddling. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. This is me, dog Scooby. <laughs> that's funny. It's great. <laughs> he nudges Mark like, no, this is funny. This is funny. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, this is a joke, Dad. I'm just enjoying. I'm part of the family business. I now. see you're part of the family oh, business. That's so nice. He's making the kids laugh. Uh, I'm just carrying on the legacy. <laughs> it's right. Now I can go. <laughs> Not both at the same time. Oh, <laughs> Lazarus, butt nugget. <laughs> New, new, new little title on the desk. Yeah, yeah, right. But you, you can bury the cat, but I'll come back. Uh, moving to the next portion of the episode. While that's going on, Boney is dressed as Santa to try and get some money, but is stopped by none other than Mark Summers. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Waiting. Who played Mark Summers? <laughs> Scott. Scott Not Mellos. Mellos. <laughs> okay, Manny. Yes. Who is the woman? Oh, right. The South mm -hmm. Army woman. I was wondering who that was. Oh, wait, he's going to get it. No. Oh, I, I have no idea. <laughs> right, uh, right again. She's Elizabeth got... Hess. <laughs> Take a guess. Uh, Take a guess. He, he doesn't know. Just tell us. Come on. Stay with your last two 
answers and uh, turn it a little bit. Scott's wife. It was Scott's no, wife. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so impressed. You wasn't really? No. Yeah, but Scott's wife. Wow. Well, Max, take your last two answers and just change. Them no, a I get bit. it. No, I'm just a little slow. You know? <laughs> I get it. I'm blown away. Yeah. So that was Scott's Manny, wife. No, no matter who wins the thing fast to make the grade, you've won the trivia for the episode for sure. Seriously. Crazy. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. And at the so, and then uh, Mark Summers is there. Then there is two guys, uh, a family, my brother Jonas, his wife, and my nephew Eric, Kimberly's brother, brother, sister, and brother. parents. They're the ones that come over and donate some money. In there. Oh, okay. Great. So they're just walking by the scene. Okay. I thought it was like um, just regular people just walking by, just like doing that in real life. It's no, it's like, my brother. No, my, my brother funny. donating some money to Salvation Army. That's cool. Uh, so Mark Summers explains to Boney that it's not for him, but it's for ch for children in need. Meanwhile, in FAO Schwartz. Wait a minute. Wait. You, there's three great jokes there. Everybody knows it's for the homeless. I live in a cave! Well, it's, it's for the hungry. I'm all bones! Uh, it's for the elderly. I'm 65 million years old! You know, lady, he's got a point. <laughs> <laughs> and then the dog comes back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. right. Ah, get that dog out of here! So now the dog squirts, and as a puppeteer, man, you gotta watch where the where you squ where we squirt the puppet. All right. So, bony. Yeah, because it'll it'll ruin the puppet. It'll of ruin course. The puppet. Right. So we shot below the face. Ah, get that dog out of here! Nice. Yeah. That's right. And that's what we call inside of baseball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want it to get moldy in there, too. So. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, it, yeah, especially those kind of puppets that can mess with the, the material, it'll mess with the paint, and can com completely ruin a puppet. Oh, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, in F.A.O. Schwartz, Sucko finds Mark, and they have some fun playing with some toys. Sadly, it's getting late, and Dottie had no luck finding the gang, and the robbers are exhausted from dealing with Dottie, so they lift up the TV and run back to where they stole the TV from. Okay, wait a minute. Hey, okay, now, the little back behind the scene at FAO Schwartz. Mm -hmm. So we call FAO Schwartz, can we come there and do that? And they go, oh, absolutely. Um, and we'll have posters there, and we'll sell the posters, and we'll mark autograph them. Absolutely, right? So they order boxes of those posters, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the yellow ones or the original ones, mm -hmm. the ones that I only have a few left of. <laughs> <laughs> That's facetious. No, no, no. <laughs> those they're the, available at wienerville.com. The, oh, the ones of Cocktail Frank, there's only, oh, you do only there's only like a couple, couple left. Get them on the left. Right. right. The, the other ones is the, we have plenty As of were, so they Okay. The so we do, we, you know, the, we're in the toy store with kids and everything. And, you know, all the kids knew, you know, the Wienerville and everything. And then I think it's time for me to sign the posters. I think we sold maybe five posters. Oh no. <laughs> oh. It was like terrible. That's why I've got them all here. <laughs> and and I was going to ask what it was like filming it in FAO Schwartz because my brother had uh, recently come from New York and he got to go visit and he said that they have people out there displaying their toys all over the place and actually and let, let kids play with them to see what it was like. So what outside of the posters what was it like to film because i'm assuming 
there was still actual shoppers in there. Oh, that was all real people there. Because I bet that was a, I bet that was a time having a blast with just playing yeah. with those toys. And that's where they filmed, uh, big, right. And, yeah, uh, with the piano. And they did the, And of course, we had to have Sako playing the piano at one point. For anybody who didn't know, that's not only was it a reference; it's where they filmed it, which was pretty cool. Right. right. And Tom Hanks was one of the five people who bought a poster. It was yeah, great. Right. <laughs> really? Are you? Is, is that a joke? Or is that a, I was gonna say. No, surely. No, no. I'm kidding. And who who played Tom Hanks? Scott <laughs> Fellows. <laughs> Scott Fellows. <laughs> it was it was the dog in a Scott Fellows mask. <laughs> playing Tom Hanks. <laughs> now, uh, Mark Summers, this is the second time we've got uh, Mark. No, this is the third now, isn't it? Because he was in the TV show at one episode, and then he was in the Hanukkah special, mm-hmm. and now he was in this this one. That, 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 that's, yeah. that tracks, right? Yeah. That's awesome. I just love that he was supportive of it. I just th- I just he wanted to point great. that out. It's it's cool. I like that. Thank you, Mark. Mark's, Mark was so supportive of us because he was... You know, he was Nickelodeon at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the time, it was it was him, and Melissa Joan Hart were very much the faces of Nickelodeon for a very long time. It, I don't. I, I think it was until right around, and even David Sedoni for a little while. But then, when all that hit the scene, it, it's it started to shift more to the all that kids. But that being said, Manny, why don't you wrap up the episode? I will. I just have one more question about the FAO shorts. Oh, then go ahead. the very last scene um, when Sako is like walking on like another a lady's basket or whatever, and like, whoa, hang on, did you do that to like a random customer? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> you no, know, they're just following me around, and I'm going. Hopefully, this will look good. Hopefully, this shot will look good. Nice man. But you know that's crazy because you know it's like. Um, I come to FAO Schwartz, I'm, I walk in the door and I, and I go, Hey, Sako. And then you cut to Sako and then all of a sudden he's on my arm. Sako, I can't believe I bumped into you. Hey, waiter, let's go have some fun. And isn't there a shot of you walking where you see you? Yeah. And he's throwing stuff at him. The whole yeah. time in there, but I first walk in there and by myself. And that's what we call a continuity error. <laughs> My man. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I'd love to do, I've loved to do things like that. Uh, yeah. I, I used to do a character <laughs> yeah, called Not Too Bright uh, that I used to do for children's ministry. And then one day we had this big kids day out. It was, uh, I, I don't remember, it was... Um, like President's Day or something that the, the kids didn't have school, but the parents still had to work. So we took the brought the kids over to church. We played games with them. Then we were going to take them to McDonald's and then laser tag. And one of the kids came over because Not Too Bright was a huge hit with the kids. And one of them said, can, can Not Too Bright come to McDonald's with us? <laughs> and I said, I, I don't see why not. <laughs> yeah. And I went and told the children's pastor, and he said, Yeah, sure, that's fine. Go ahead. I said, We'll take them all to the church van. I'm gonna go get my, get the costume on. And it was always just this bright neon yellow shirt and said, Not too bright on it. And then I could find whatever else. Like what one giant clown shoe, one shoe that looked like a foot, a, a doctor's lab coat, a, a giant clown wig. The rest of the, the accessories always changed. But uh, I would go to mcdonald's with the with the kids and the second i got in the car they were screaming they were so excited they know (laughs) it's me but they know it's a character and they had so much fun with it and i go into mcdonald's and i'm obnoxious i know i'm obnoxious but the kids were laughing and i've also noticed that the other kids in the restaurant are starting to laugh which then makes the parents less irritated and i remember at one point i walked through and I found a ketchup packet on the floor that somebody had stepped on, and and there was ketchup all over the floor. And I pointed it out, and I screamed, "The floor is bleeding!" <laughs> and made everyone around it crack up laughing. And um, I think about two, three weeks later, one of the parents from church came over and said, "Were you at McDonald's as as not too bright?" I said, "Yeah, I was." And they said, I went through the drive through Somebody took a Polaroid picture of you as oh, that character. Wow. And they got it behind the desk. I'm like, are you serious? Yeah. Wow. 
Wow. And, and I don't know if it was like a warning if this guy comes in, get, kick him out. I don't, I don't <laughs> right. know. Which I, I don't know what it was, why it was there, but I thought that was kind of funny. But I can just imagine going through FAO Schwartz as uh, as Sako and just be because I, I'm sure you were fully in character, not only just being aware of trying to make the, the special entertaining, but. I know how much you love just feeding off the energy of people and, and making them enjoy themselves and laugh. And, and I can I can only imagine how much fun that, that was to do. It was more fun to th the concept of it than the actual thing. It, it, it wasn't as great as I thought it was. But I feel like maybe even if you didn't know, maybe other people had fun seeing it, mm -hmm. you know? It, it was, was it not that it, or? It, it was... I thought it would just be like, you know, like Rob, he put Robin Williams in F.A.O. Schwartz, it'd be great. The only problem was, I'm not Robin Williams. You're Mark Wiener, That's baby. right, but. Yeah, you're better. It's like I was going, oh, okay. It's just like, it's just, a lot of the jokes didn't work. Okay. okay. But. But it was still fair. a fun, entertaining yeah. thing. Yeah. And, and it was a fun little, mo and, and it's kids. Kids love to w go through toy stores, and I've. Right. I'm in my 30s. I still haven't been to FAO Schwartz and go being able to toy stores are becoming less and less of a thing. And having that little moment in mainstream Nickelodeon was pretty freaking cool, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Yeah, also, because Big had just come out like a year. To, when, when did that come out? Maybe two years or, earlier? Or... Uh, that or that see, year. That, I want to say that was uh, that was 80s or 80s. OK. Big. But it wasn't so long ago that people had forgot, you know, like that's kind of cool. To oh, yeah. Yeah, it was 88 when that came out. But uh, no, it was still a big thing. And um, and people still would go to FAO Schwartz just to play with a piano. I mean, it's it's still a thing now. Which I, I was worried that they closed it down, but I I'm happy to see that it's. Yeah, it was happy to see it in the city yesterday. They have it there. Yeah. The I, don't, I don't know about the big piano, but yeah, it's I there. It's still there, okay. It's still there. My, uh, yeah. my brother had just went earlier this year, and they still got it. He said they're fairly inexpensive. Yeah, I can't imagine. They they had an FAO shorts when I was growing up in, in our hometown in Stanford, and I remember they didn't have the piano, but they had a monkey on a zip line, and it would go <laughs> on a unicycle just all throughout the whole store with this animatronic talking tree, and they had the whole moving head, and it's, I mean, it's so magical. Like, you have wow. no, never seen anything like that before with toys everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, that's so special, for sure. Yeah. And it, stuff like that. And Stu Leonard's. Yeah, because where dull fresh vegetables are good for yeah. you. I don't think I've ever heard of that. That's great, though. <laughs> it's just the big dull, you know, the the uh, fruit and veg or the vegetable too. Yeah. And they just had these like big animatronics, and they would sing and do, like whenever you press the button. Yeah, and Very it would just be dull and serious. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 not du not dull. No, dull. D O L E. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. I thought dull. you said that they would say dull. Like they no, would say it dully. No, no. Vegetables no. are good for you. Yeah, good. <laughs> Eat your vegetables. <laughs> you <want. laughs> oh, that sounds like a child trying to convince another child that vegetables are actually good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Don't. You don't want them. <laughs> So I will finish this off. All right. <clears throat> Running out of options, Dottie tells Zip to go for the big one, meaning the TV in the middle of Times Square. That, of course, gets everyone's attention. Dottie explains the issue and how they have how they need everybody there at the Nick Party penthouse to perform. They all agree and head out. Captain Bob takes his mermaid date with them. Dottie and Zip forget that they have to be there, but luckily Zip puts the machine into transport overdrive, transporting both of them to the New Year's party. Zip ends up in the dip. And Dottie ends up in the chip bowl. Mark and the gang perform the Get Ready song with their special musical guest, Paul Schaefer. Everyone gets a shot with confetti and they all have a wonderful time. While the party goes on, Boney takes the food to the bell ringer for the needy children where a policeman gives Boney his wallet back. The end. All right, what was the, because um, I know we talked a bit uh, earlier about the, the cameos, but 
whose idea was it to get Paul Schaefer? And how did you end up getting Paul Schaefer? Well, we lived in the same town with Paul and we went, we went to the same synagogue. So we knew Paul. Wow. wow. And so, you know, I asked him and he said, sure. Yeah, babe. If you could have asked him like, hey, can I get on Letterman? Well, actually, I, at some point I was working on a... There was a sketch, right, of, of the... NBC. Oh. Wow, okay. and that's like the classic one, too. These are the pencils that David, you know how David used to throw? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I went, I had met with David once or twice to, I, Rocco, my, you know, Sacco's uncle. Yeah. Yeah. The, the bit was that he keeps throwing those pencils into behind him, the but it's puppet my city, puppets though. that live back there. So I, I worked on, you know, we, the scene was that Rocco was going to be on his rooftop and all of the pigeons had pencils in them. They were all dead because David That's kept so throwing grim. pencils. <laughs> and Rocco was going to be there. You know, this was after the Saturday Night Live. You know, what does Rocco, you know, is after, you know, afterwards. after his puppet fight. Right. So um, that was that routine. And so, so I knew Paul before that, anyway, you know, and after. Wow, that's and, so fun. So that's Paul, insane. So the way we shot um, in Yorktown, New York, um, my family had a shopping center and there was in a, their store right next, a part of this shopping mall, there were empty s stores. Um, because this was right after the, you know, a lot of stores, uh, the crash in the market um, when we filmed, the, the last stores went out of business. And, um, <laughs> and then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what the hell happened next? I did, I, I, Back to the puppet set. I, I wet myself. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> no, so. You sure it was you or what in the dog? <laughs> so that set that is there cool. is in a warehouse where we, you know we had like 30 p crew members you know all filming for that one scene and you know this way paul only had to travel like 10 minutes from oh his he house. filmed that in yeah, up in wow i didn't know that and it was so nice of him and that was just you know we didn't know what really we were going to well do. he's a huge fan of you don't you remember that scene from the the episode you know growing up all my friends wanted to be either a beetle or a rolling stone but all i ever wanted to be was a weenie <laughs> he came up with that right that's there great. i love that it was, it was like wow that's good genius i love it yeah and you know letterman was big in 94 like he was the biggest thing on tv at that yeah. time so that's an honor to get him to do that that's great um what what was your favorite uh, moment making the special that choreography scene at the end that was fun singing yeah those <laughs> the were, singing so, yeah. yeah those were dancers a dance troupe from long island they came in and the long island ladies yeah and um oh there's so many fun I gotta say, I, you know, I always wanted to do some acting, and so when I got out of the van, when I get when they kicked me out of the van, when I first got there, I kind of like was f feeling my acting chops, you know, you know, it's like, all right, you guys, you know, it's like, all right, you take care, you know, no, I'll just go over here, you know. Did, did so, you jump out, or, or was somebody who actually pushed you out? They threw me out of the van, you know, they, you know, pushed me out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I knew the characters threw you, but was, did you, whenever you filmed it, did someone actually push you out to make it look like you were being pushed out? Or did you just fall out to make it look like you were being pushed? That's called acting. That's right. 
No, I don't know. What I can't you? tell you. If I did, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't. I just you know, it pushed me out. The true actor never re reveals his secrets, but you know, at at Stella Adler's, you know, <laughs> when we would, we, we, we many times we. It was a technique we would call the faux throw. That's right. Yes. Right. <laughs> you make it seem as if you're being thrown. Right. But in reality, someone's gently lifting. Right. Yeah. Now get out of here! Oh. There, there's a game. I forgot what it was called, but you, you, everybody would have a, a, a stack of cards that all had little silly phrases, and then everyone would have uh, some kind of an accent that they would have to do, like everybody in a uh, British accent, and everybody would have to say a line in in oh, that's great. British accent. And uh, there was one where there's um, player's choice, and somebody said, "Do say your line like it's a slasher movie," but. <laughs> and I went to the basement because the basement, uh, the door swings open, so everyone would not see the entrance. They would the, the door would block them, and I put my knees on the top step, and then I crawled out. So they just see me crawling out from <laughs> behind the door. Wow! And, I, and then I said my my line, and then I pushed my knees up as quick as I could, but because my knees are hitting the the stairs. It actually pulled my body backwards, so it looked like I was being I dragged away. Oh, wow. and that that was that was really fun. And somebody would say, "Man, it looked like someone dragged your ass away," <laughs> <laughs> which was perfect. But I was thinking of that whenever you had uh, yeah. pushed out of the van. I was like, I wonder if he, if he was just pushed out. Someone was uh, there was a crew member who pushed him out, or if he just fell out on his own and made it look that way. But either way, it was. I saw my feet. I wasn't. You know, I didn't get like thumped down on the. But it still looked like you were shoved like out. Yeah, right. yeah. That's... Which is the idea, you know, it, right. and, and and it looked great. Uh, going along with uh, not just the the favorite moment, but going back and watching it again. What are some of your favorite things about the show, as some of just watching it? Oh, there's so many, you know, like when I. When I was sitting here watching my daughter watch it, and um, you know, and, and that was that was really enjoyable. You know, there's a the writers. You know, it moves well. It moves. It mm -hmm. it, it really. There's a lot of cl classic Wienerville style stuff in there. I feel like it all gels well too, because I mean, the director was Scott Preston, who did the second season of the show, mm. so. I, maybe he knows how to work around everything and just make it seem like an overlong episode of the show, which is great. You know, and the, sto the story that Boney, you know, I like how the, they t the writers tied in, you know, redemption, a redemption of Boney giving money, food, the food back to the, the homeless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, Even though, doesn't he vomit it up? Um... Well, that like, was in the beginning where he said, I threw up my baloney. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right in, the end, the... in a minute, Boney, I have to pay the toll. Boney, boy, Boney. Paid. I'm Boney. I'm Boney. I threw up my baloney. At the end, he stole the food <laughs> from the party and gave it to. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> But here, here's a little back behind the scenes thing. You know, the van is pulling up to the Holland Tunnel at the toll booth. Then, then Boney, I got to pay the toll, right? And that's when Boney fake throws up into the, right? But that was not shot. The, the, the toll booth was shot on the Garden State Parkway at a toll booth because, you know, you can't, we had to get permission to stop the film. Mm. So they, they put us at a completely other location where we, you know, one of these, like on the Garden State Parkway in New Jersey, there's these lone toll booths that are just standing there. It's like, you know, 
Won't somebody throw up in me? <laughs> Please, give me some money. I, I'm just standing there. Uh, I nothing to do. <laughs> no, I can't believe right there were standalone toll booths that no one drove to at all. No, no, wow. well, you know, they're just like you, you get off the Garden State Parkway, and there's like. No, we get it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that that toll booth where he threw up, and then there's this <laughs> oh, the smile, no. and then it realizes it oh, yeah, up and goes right. to the. Yeah, that yeah. was cute. The the Kenny G bit, right? Did was that was that more of a of a character theme because of uh, we're we're dealing with a rocker who does not like Kenny G, or did someone <clears throat> in, in the writers were really just not like kenny g well i apologize to kenny g it's you know that 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 was a diss on him and you know i would never do that today but i feel like that was kind of zeitgeisty right like people yeah. thought maybe that yeah. it was a little bit lame or whatever oh yeah because i was forced to listen to kenny g in the morning for like christmas it's like this, right. is, oh, this is terrible and i was eight years old so yeah it was funny that was even a joke on on wayne's world too you know, we have lots of big acts that come through here. Ice Capades, Tiny Toons, Kenny G. Kenny G. Because because they were they were rockers. They they don't that's that's not their style of music. So that's that's what I thought of. Uh, whatever uh, seeing the episode was, of course, the rocker is not going to like Kenny G. Right, but, but I, I just, apologize if I offended him. I'm sure he takes no offense. Did you ever talk to him? Or no, you, I'm saying no. just uh, oh. bring it out. In, <laughs> putting it out in the universe. Okay, okay. That if I... he watches this. Yes, Kenny G, we are sorry. sorry. <laughs> and it just cuts back to his apartment. He's like, finally, the closure I needed after all these. It's <laughs> like a family guy bit. I love that. Way out the window. Yeah. Yeah. And he's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's got a yeah. balloon with me, and he pops. He's it. got darts. Next darts, to right? It. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, well, we've got uh, a bit more to the episode. Not a whole lot more, but we are going to pause for just a moment. Where we we're done touring through new york and we're going to get some thoughts to wrap up with in just a few minutes so first let's go to a, a pee break. break or something yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i gotta take the dog for a walk yeah <laughs> just hang out for a half hour <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be back in just a minute don't whisper for wiener there Wine for Wienerville. Wienerville. Keep whining. There's more Nickelodeon Wienerville ahead. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Wienerville's New Year Special. If you are enjoying this episode, please hit the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and make sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the slime-tastic action. If you are listening on a podcast app, please leave us a review where possible. All these simple actions on your part helps others who miss that slime-filled past find more of our stuff. Can't get enough Splat Attack? Head over to patreon.com slash splat attack. We have bonus episodes, bonus content, early access, live streams twice a month, and you also are able to be involved with a community that's all about, well, community. So head over to patreon.com slash splat attack and become one of our gackoids. I don't, I mean, I'm, I think we've talked about it before, but he is a very so talented... That's right. Plug it again. A very talented uh, seamster, seamstress, whatever you want to call it. And he does a lot of um, like ch charity work, I guess you would call it, for that uh, the Clearwater Sloop uh, and the Hudson River. And he makes these um, really beautiful like fanny packs, you know, with all these things. And he does everything 100% from scratch. Um, and he just set up an Etsy shop, so maybe we could uh, share the link for that. But all the proceeds yes. go through the Clearwater Sloop uh, to raise money to keep that, uh, you know, company going or the, 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 boat, the, the movement, boat. baby. And this is all the set, the, an old sail from the Clearwater. Yeah, every right, everything's made from the sail. Sure, look at sailing away. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> 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 oh, the, but the bag's got a sense of humor. <laughs> Everything's a puppet with a puppeteer. Ah, that's Everything. Right. Oh yeah. Ah, 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 ah. Hey, zip it. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs>
Christmas may be over, but it is always time to have the new year, new you look. And for the new you, you can always get the new do over at our bonfire page. Go to bonfire.com slash store slash splat attack store with hyphens in between. We do have some coffee mugs, but our abundance of selection for t-shirts is there, along with some splat attack originals, along with some nods to some of our favorite Nickelodeon shows that we liked when we were younger. Uh, Clearest Explains It All, Double Dare, Roundhouse, things like that. So head over to bonfire.com slash store slash spot attack store with hyphens in between for the new you in 2024. Join us next time, Slamsters, as we dive one more time into Are You Afraid of the Dark with some pretty elemental battle going on with a look at the fiery ghost as well as the frozen ghost. Check us out next time, only on Splat Attack. There's no place like Wienerville. There's no place like Wienerville. There's no place like Nickelodeon Wienerville. So stay tuned as Nickelodeon Wienerville continues. All right, we're back. We just washed our hands from uh, (laughs) Mark's absolutely right. Uh, so with that, uh, we're going to go into our episode ratings. Now, the, when we did the Hanukkah special, I know Mark had said, no, I'm not rating my own show. And I'm, I'm assuming that's probably going to uh, stand for this one. But um, the the way we've, and I've told you this before, but just as a reminder, we rate our show, or we, not our shows, we rate the shows that we watch very much like a report card, A through F. But then above A, we have show when it completely exceeds our expectations and we have s double s and triple s and uh brett did give us notes for this episode and he gave his rating for it and his opinion is of i think i love this one just as much if not (laughs) i think i love this one just as much if not a tiny bit more than the hanukkah special it's got the same zany charm as the previous one we covered, though I'm a little disappointed the Get Ready song, uh, Get Ready, We're Ready song is recycled here. I think the best part about these Wienerville specials is they are, all in caps, fun. They know how to have fun, and while they don't always make sense, they're worth sticking with for the ride. Highlights for me include Boney as Santa and Mark Sum- Summer's return cameo, uh, the party at the end, and the van scene with that rockin' ZZ Top-esque music uh, that we also heard in the DOS Bus episode of Pete and Pete. Speaking of the brothers Pete, nice to see Little Pete's hat on uh, one of the thieves, which was Joe O'Connor. And I'd say that if the Dottie kidnapping scenes didn't drag on as much, uh, and if the subway scene with Buddy were cut out, I'd rate it higher, but overall still a solid New Year's special. For he, for him, he's got it in the S tier category. He gives it a single S of Spiderific. And uh, Manny, what is your rating, good sir? Oh, I I didn't like it. I loved it. Oh, it, gets, <laughs> it gets a triple S, a splat station, a splat spectacle, whatever Splat-ceptional. it is. Splat-ceptional. Splat-ceptional. Yes. To me, this special was perfect. It flowed just like you guys said, just like a Wienerville episode. And having Mark there, you hear that executive? Having Mark there made it great. It made every puppet have their own uh, three-dimensional quality. Everybody had their own personality. Pops and Louie trying to park the van and everything. Seeing Dottie in her office was great. Hey, Louie! <laughs> Seeing Dottie in her set was amazing. And I, this actually goes with another question I want to ask. Um, with the Wienerville show, did you replace Dottie's set three times for the series? Well, they just made a copy of that set. Okay, because season two, it looked like everything was outlined, and this one was, like, nice and blocky, so I was just curious about that as a kid. But going back to my review, I really liked how 
how everything felt so organic, natural. You got to see Sako ice skating and everything, F.E.O. Schwartz. You got to see a big party at the very end. It kind of gave me Muppet movie vibes. Mm -hmm. And that's what I truly, truly love about this special. And that's why I consider it a fantastic special. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, I am going to negate what uh, Brett said on a couple of points. Uh, I r agree that this was a very, very fun special. Uh, I, I couldn't help but smile all the way through it. At the very least, smile all the way through it. Uh, there were a couple times I had to stop and, and backtrack a little bit because there were jokes that I had missed from when I was laughing, like the Captain Bob segment. Um, I know that uh, he felt that the the... Brett had commented about how the Dottie scenes felt like they were dragging. Uh, maybe maybe the shelves were dragging along the pavement, but I don't know. But I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I, I love how it was. I love the ingenuity behind it. I love how it really looked like the TV. I'm still baffled at the fact that, that it was still you that was it, it was in there. And uh, I loved the the subway scene. I, I, I don't I like the jokes. But I also liked watching everyone trying not to break, which usually makes me laugh even more. Uh, I love the cameos. I, I love learning how much Scott Fellows was in this. But, uh, <laughs> but even finding out that Joe O'Connor was in this and, and he wasn't even credited. But uh, th there's so much to love about this. And you don't have those annoying cartoons in the middle of the Wienerville episode to completely stop the flow of the episode. And you got to see kids at FAO Schwartz and at Pier 17 just enjoying the whole thing. Uh, it's an infectious, fun time. And I agree wholeheartedly with Manny. This is an absolutely perfect Weederville episode. Triple S splat exceptional for me. Thank you. Uh, so this this next bit, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I think uh, Mark might sweep the the competition with this one, but we're gonna go into our one segment for the episode, which shouldn't be too long. We're gonna take a look into Think Fast to Make the Grade. Time to think fast to make the grade. For this, it's it's all trivia-based stuff, uh, and they're all questions based on the episode itself from what we've actually seen. And uh, Manny wrote these questions, so I think it'll be just more. Hmm. More should fair. It, should, should it be Mark versus Max? Oh. That's a good one. Because some of these, I know Mark. Well, I mean, Mark's gonna know all of these, but it'll be fun to see what what Max recalls. But uh, either way, hey, uh, Andy, let's go. Uh, I'll I'll let you take it away, Manny, since you did these questions. Okay. Hmm. Number one, besides Mark, who is the other non puppet character in the Wienerville gang? Captain Bob. Correct. <laughs> nice and Next question. Next Wait, question. Since when are they not the same person? <laughs> exactly. Since never. <laughs> Ridiculous. Watch the show, executives. Jeez. All right. Question two. When Zip gets slingshotted back to Dottie's office, what animal head does he crash into? We have that downstairs. <laughs> Is it a pig? I think it's a, a lamb. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a lamb's head. Now yep. we're tied. The game is on. All right, bring yes. it up. <laughs> a VAN. Uh, okay. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> okay. This next question, it's going to be based on how fast you guys can raise your hands. All right. <laughs> who did Frank give the wrong address to? Who? What was the question? Who did Frank give the wrong address to? I know to? that one. I know that one. That's Pops. the only thing I you know. Maybe if you knew how to cook food, we wouldn't be in this situation. Oh, shit. I gave it to Kenny G! My favorite! Correct. My favorite! Kenny G stinks almost as much as your food. Oh. <laughs> I can't be nasty anymore. Oh, that's right. No, no more Kenny G hate. 
We already made amends. Right. Okay. Well, wait. Bring in the next question for Pops and Louie. <laughs> the next question for Pops and Louie. What movie did Boney see, and he was very disappointed with that, with the special effects? Well, was it Was it Jurassic Park? Close. Parking what? lot. No, that, not even that. Oh, well, well, but <laughs> Jurassic tra Trailer Park. There it is. Yes, that's yes, it. We got it. <laughs> maybe now, maybe next you should learn some recipes. <laughs> All right, you still need to be in therapy. Oh, you're right. Next question. The next question. Paul Schaefer growing. <laughs> Paul Schaefer growing up, he knew who wanted to be a Beatle or a Rolling Stone, but what did he always want to be? Oh, I know this one. I know this one. Can I say? Louis. Yes. Oh, he always wanted to be a weenie. Oh, yes. Yes. Good going. Yes. Oh, yeah. Good going. <laughs> Next question. What famous artist did Zip mention as a gag? Yeah, famous artist. Was it Van Gogh? Or Picasso? It was Picasso. Hey! <laughs> Hey, get off my back. Okay. <laughs> and last question. This is for all the marbles here. Oh. What does Mark's van license plate read? Was that the one that we? It wasn't Kick Eight Five Five, right? Yeah. Oh no, that was uh, that was Sokka. Uh, I don't know. Do uh, you know? I don't. I don't know. It's W I N R B I L. Oh. That's Mr. like Shorter right when. That's right when uh, Zip crashes on and he like stretches. Oh, it's just like cool. at the beginning. That's that's Wiener Wienerville. Bell. You nice. did it. <laughs> yes. 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 All right. Who okay, won? Manny. Yes. What's the name? Paul Schaefer. What's the name of the drummer in the in the Weenies? Oh, uh, Antoinette. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> I think that was the drummer on Schaefer. Letterman? Oh, yeah, I think it might have been. Anton Fig? I don't know. On the Letterman show? Yeah, it's Anton Fig. Oh, was it? Anton I'm, I'm a late night uh, junkie, so yeah. Oh, like it, it was the drummer? Anton yep. Fig. Yep. It's the Ned, probably. Oh, okay. That's good. An homage. Nice. nice. I apologize. I wasn't keeping score. Who You're won? All right. You're all right. There's nothing we, all, right. we all won. We all won. <laughs> we all won. We're winners, everybody. <laughs> you might be winners, but we're wieners. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was so much fun. <laughs> oh gosh, and and also because I I started to mention about it uh, before we started the episode, and I said no wait, I'll say uh, I I love, and we said this before because this was on the the patreon episode but i love the set piece that you've got behind you I, that that is one of my favorite things it's oh. so cool to see yeah i mean you even got the cocktail frank and his weenies yes I brought too. that up there recently that's right wow that's awesome i can see it that's right yep there's the city hall it's so cool and that's and the I, phone yeah. that you guys called me on remember yeah <laughs> yeah and I just found this downstairs. That's from the city hall. Yeah. God, that's in such good shape, too. It's right. I wish I was in good shape as a slayer. <laughs> oh, you guys look great. All right. With that, our closing question for the episode is, for all of you Slimesters, do you like New Year's and do you make New Year's resolutions? Uh, if so, what do you? what's your resolution this year? We had like three questions there, but that's okay. Feel free to answer all or some or none of them. Uh, let us know via email at splatattack2021 at gmail.com, or you can always DM us on Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, just about any socials that we've got. Uh, we've got quite a bit at Splat Attack Podcast, or leave us a comment down below on, the, on our YouTube channel, Splat Attack Podcast. Without further ado... Thank you so much again, Mark and Max, for taking the time to be here. It's it's always such a blast to get to talk with you guys. It's and thank you, Pops and Louie. Yes. Us. Oh, Pops and Louie? It was fantastic seeing you guys and getting oh. along, too. There was oh, a little yeah. arguing, but it was fine. We were in therapy. Yes, we're working through our, our triggers. <laughs> 
And it was good to see you too, Manny. Good to oh, see you. Tremendous happy, seeing you. Happy holidays to both of you. Yeah. Happy holidays. <sighs> Without I further... Hope that, I hope that your fruitcake, if you eat it, is tastier than whatever you made last week. You're a fruitcake. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, you, I'm feeling triggered. I need to go to my happy place. Your, your happy place? It, it, oh, my, good. My, okay, I'm sorry. We'll make up. Sorry for cutting you off. What were you saying? <laughs> Perfectly fine. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Without further ado, Manny, will you scrape the slime off this wall for us, please? I have to... Wait. Manny, you, you, you look like you have something that you're wanting to say. Uh, I do know one thing I want to do before we go. I know I was missing something from earlier. What's that? Happy, Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Yeah. That's what it was. I hope you guys have a wonderful start to the new year. Oh, thank you. You too! Thank you so much for joining us today. Help me! <laughs> Splat you later. Splat you later! Bye. Bye, splat you later. Splat you later. host the first ever Nick New Year's Eve. Finally, there's stuff you want to watch when you stay up. Nick's got a full night of all your favorite Nick shows with surprise guests, surprise episodes, and hey, there's even a few surprises for Mark, too. Hmm? Oh, nothing. Go back to sleep, Mark. So get some rest and get ready for the first ever Nick New Year's Eve starting next Friday at 8, 7 central, only on Nickelodeon.